me to Tuskegee is first uh, being invited uh, by my cousin, uh, the Honorable Tiffany uh, Johnson Cole, to speak um, at the first annual Women of Valor Breakfast, um, sponsored by the Delta Sigma Theta uh, Incorporated. And um, so that's what brings me to Tuskegee, and it's an honor to be here. And I have the uh, privilege of staying on the campus of Tus Tuskegee University. And uh, of course, uh, having boots on the ground, it really does solidify um, how far we've come as people and how far we need to go to ensure that we are developing young people, developing and moving our cities forward, but collectively um, moving the United States of America. Now, you had the audacity to run for mayor of New Orleans, and you had the blessings to win. Tell me about that. Well, I think you hit it, uh, the blessings uh, to win, uh, the courage uh, to stand up to run, and that was all because of the grace and real mercy uh, given by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who I believe has um, ordered my steps, and I have the willingness uh, to follow. What did you promise the people? I promised the people to improve their daily quality of life, uh, to ensure that they can uh, reach their full potential in their city, um, pushing towards equity and real inclusion. Uh, to improve the housing stock and affordability in the city, improve the, the, the wage uh, gap that currently exists and has grown even wider, particularly in the past 13 years. So I promise people um, prosperity, growth, and real opportunity. It won't be easy. How are you going to do it? It's definitely, uh, not only is, won't be easy, it's, it's not easy um, every single day. But it really does uh, mean you have to meet people where they are, provide them with the resources and tools that are necessary so that they can um, reach their full potential, whether it's job growth and workforce development opportunities, of course, um, improving that, um, the ability to increase wages. And so again, having that courage to push for a wage expansion and growth at the state level, um, making sure again that um, our people are groomed and prepared to take on the jobs that um, that are coming, um, but are, that are new industries such as whether it's a uh, biomedicine, um, digital media platforms, renewable energy, uh, stormwater management, new technology that's that's needed to advance, you know, not only the city but the country, and so making sure that people are are in a position to take advantage of these opportunities. How do you intend to eradicate some of the hopelessness that we find in so many people today? You, know, you have to, in that whole spirit of meeting them where they are, is, is doing so with the spirit of compassion and empathy, one that uh, is not judgmental, and one that is just true in, word, in terms of not just words, but in action. So the best way to build hope is to demonstrate um, with action that not only you care, but that you mean what you say and you do what you say. And so when you're able to show people small um, wins, uh, small growth opportunities, it only builds momentum and therefore elevates hope and brings about the changes that we're looking to, to bring about. Lies seem to dominate these days. And seemingly every truth is twisted into a lie. Mm -hmm. And every lie is put out there to try to make it appear to be truth. 
how do you deal with that now in your new uh, position? Well, I've dealt with that um, in my current position. I would say as a city councilwoman, I've dealt uh, with that even running uh, for mayor. But how you deal with it is, again, not talk, but you have to walk it. You have to demonstrate, um, again, your commitment and things that you say have to manifest in action. And when you do that, then it counters the negative, it counters the lies, and it allows you to stand on what not only you believe, but your works that you've been able to demonstrate. But how do you get the vision, the hopelessness of defined of those people who have given up on just coming to the meeting? I think, again, by the outreach that's necessary, reaching out to them, um, not um, just, again, in words, but being able to go to them, touch them, talk with them, listen. The ability to listen to people, I think, is at the, the core of the, of the ability to serve them. So when we listen to people and we respond with action based on what they want and what they need, it builds hope and, of course, momentum, and it changes lives. Absolutely. Are you going to have any kind of youth council in order to get the input from you, young people? Oh, absolutely. And not just um, uh, for a short period of time, but something that is consistent uh, so that every step of the way we are listening uh, to our young people and, again, meeting their needs based on what they want. But it starts with listening. Welcome to Little Country Tuskegee, and thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's an honor to be here.